And welcome everybody, Don Giannetti here with Lighting-Essentials.com and Project52ProSystem.com. Um, I love doing this with some of the students' work over at Project 52 Pro System, and uh, it's, it's always a blast to see how they manage to do these shots. Now, we're focused on commercial photography at uh, Project 52. We're not really uh, weddings or babies and that type of thing. It's very much focused purely on commercial photography. Now we do a lot of people, we do food, we do architecture, we do tabletop, we do still life, and etc. This assignment was to do an ad shot for a tea importer uh, and that the image would run on the left side of the page of the magazine. So the image would be on the left and there would be copy on the right. So it's very important that the image work on the left hand panel. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, look at a few of these images. We're going to look and see how that uh, came about with a lot of the photographers and the really extraordinary way they lit them. I think you're going to learn a lot and uh, be real, Im real impressed with how these photographers got the images. All right, first up is Amy Armour Avant. Amy is uh, shooting a teapot with some tea and lemons in the back and a little... Uh, a little bit of uh, foliage, etc., back here. Uh, notice the lemons are slightly out of focus. That really does bring a lot of the attention right up here to the teapot. Uh, it's uh, beautifully lit. Notice the the highlight here on the teapot. A beautiful highlight on the rim of the handle, letting the handle have dimension. Uh, if without that, then it's just a black thing there, you know, and it. It doesn't have any interest with the uh, highlight we know it's round and we know that it's it's interesting to look at so we've got uh, some nice shadow and I like what Amy did here she's got the dark side of the of the teapot the shadow goes up against a little bit lighter pot uh, part of the uh, uh, lemons in the background beautifully done image I think you're gonna like how she lit it <coughs> excuse me she's got Big bank of windows over here with a uh, with some shears here, shower curtain uh, light, and then another diffuser here because there were so many lights on this side of the uh, windows on this side of the of the room that the window was actually coming back in the uh, being reflected from the teapot. And she didn't want the the messy window here. She preferred to control the highlight, the specular here by putting up the uh, scrim so basically her light is uh, six uh, you know almost 10 feet of lighting over here from window light a simple uh, white card to this side to keep the shadows open uh, and a light coming down on the background a little bit uh, to keep the background nice and clean and bright with uh, otherwise you can see as it's farther away from these lights starting to go gray so she's using this light to keep it that background nice and bright and gives a nice airy feeling. This card is to keep that light here. This card keeps that light from hitting the product over here. It can hit the tops of the leaves, but not the product. So you can see we've got a little bit of light on the leaves back there, a little bit of light on the background, keeping it look really nice and fresh. Uh, and then our items up front. Sweet job, Amy Avant. Barb Sherman uh, built this little uh, little table of our little wall of uh, wood, barn wood, uh, and it's up against the window. Uh, there's a little space between it, lets a little bit of light in. That's very cool, gives it a nice warm feeling, makes it very real feeling. Uh, you'll notice the light all the way around is just beautiful. Look at this highlight up here, highlight on the honey. The honey is backlit. Well, wait a minute, we've got a boards here. How could the honey be backlit? Well, we'll see in just a second. The cup looks great. Everything looks great. Notice how she's uh, carefully framed it, cutting, cropping off the book at the bottom, cropping off the cookies and this. The handle's cropped off. The boards are cropped off. But the tea and the tea container are within the frame. They become the heroes by that careful cropping uh, and keeping it matched. How is it lit? This is somewhat, I would say, classic uh, dark field lighting in a way. 
Uh, we've got the board back here. The sun is above it. The window light is above the board. Uh, and there are white fill cards all around. She's got a large V card on this side, uh, a large card standing on that side. So she's created this beautiful bouncing light all the way through here that when you go back to the image, you can see how pretty that, that, that card keeps the front of this. You can see it lightening up the, uh, the cup here. The card on the left side keeps this side of the cup lit and that side of this lit and the light coming over the top that's our rim right in here, here, and up here. Look again. If you have a window that uh, that uh, you can shoot against, you can do an awful lot of beautiful still life photography. Food, um, uh, product, lots and lots of stuff. Jewelry, even. Uh, tremendous amount of stuff can be done with that window. Lovely shot. Bob Wheaton... Uh, is in uh, the Massachusetts area and um, it gets cold there and he wanted to do a delightful warm hot cup of tea you can look at and see how beautiful the lighting is here look at that great rim all the way around the glass so it's nice and lit it's popped away from the background the background is a couple of boards he put together and he's got a focused light through a cookie up here giving a little bit of streaks of light to the background of the steam. Notice how the steam has a little bit of color in it, a little bit of warmth from that light in the back. The, the product down here, the tea bag and the orange and the, the, the mint leaves, look how beautiful, beautifully they are lit. Really, really clean. And yet it feels different than the, the tea. And it is different. Bob is using a... Uh, beauty dish with a grid up above and he's got a uh, or just a beauty dish I'm sorry and he's got a polarizing uh, piece of polarizer on the on that to cut back on the different glares that were that he was getting on the uh, the teacup we've got a strip box here with a diffusion panel down low the, the rest of the strip box is blasting out here but the the part that's being reflected by the teacup is got a diffusion panel in front of it white card on this side uh, and just a, a really lovely shot so the main light is coming from behind this scrim here I don't I don't remember if, if Bob said that was a, a, a translum scrim or if it's plexiglass but behind it is a very bright light so this is essentially dark field lighting this panel lights up the background stays dark and that edge just puts that edge all the way around the teacup while the light from the top lights up the top of the uh, the orange and the the tea bag giving us that beautiful light and the light from the strip box on this side comes in and gives us another highlight on the tea just to, to give it a little bit more uh, what I, I call special magic and you can see it right here coming in and uh, you can see that the tea bag, by the way, reflects in the in the glass. Anything that's that's glass is going to reflect what's around it. Uh, I've I've often been asked, do you remove that uh, or leave it there? And the the answer is, you and the art director come up with that decision. That's uh, you know, if you're doing it for your portfolio, do it either way you want. Just choose the one that looks the best to you. It may not look good if you take out all the reflections. Maybe that the, the piece starts to die a little bit because it doesn't feel natural. Or maybe it's it's too much. In this case, it's just a choice. You leave it in or you take it out. That's you and the art director, you and your client working together to make that decision. Great composition, really nicely done and uh, got the nice condensation on the tea. Gary Beller uh, did something kind of modern. Uh, Gary shared with us that these did not balance uh, as well as they uh, look like right here and there were several cleanups involved uh, as they would come crashing down but Gary uh, uh, created this great uh, great uh, reflection back here on the on the plexi and he's got the big white board up there uh, the T strainer gives gives it context when you look at it you kind of automatically know it's T because of the T strainer 
Uh, little, we got a couple little bubbles right there that adds to the enjoyment of, of the tea. The tea is all perfectly level, while the glasses are, you know, kind of cattywampus. And of course, cattywampus is a technical term. Uh, I think, I think Edward Weston came up with cattywampus. If I'm, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I got it wrong. But it's a great shot by Gary Beller, and I really, really love the composition. How did he do it? It's so simple. So simple. Black cards on both sides. We'll go back in a second and see why. Plexi. Transloom with the light behind it. Plexiglass, transloom, camera coming straight across the plexi. The plexi is reflecting the transloom. That's why we don't even get a, a real horizon. It's very barely perceptible. And then everything that we see here is a reflection of not a shadow, a reflection of it. Camera from here, and the little white piece of styrofoam packing stuff was used just to open up uh, and give us an edge on the T strainer. Let's go back. That little edge right there, that's that little white piece of foam, packing foam uh, that came in there. This is the transloom. There is, uh, I'm sorry, I'm moving stuff around. Uh, this is the transloom back here. This is the uh, the beautiful um, plexi going right up and meeting it, putting the horizon right there at that line. A good choice for Gary. It's really a fun shot, really well done. Good job, Gary Beller. Michelle Garcia presented, I think, a really interesting photograph. And no, she didn't shoot it vertical. Um, it's a, a horizontal picture. Uh, it's very cinematic in my in my thought and if I was if I was an art director I'd just be just so jazzed to create an ad with this it's cinematic in that many still photographers most still photographers would try to light this so that the white uh, vase and white cup and white ceramic here came out as white um, and that would brighten everything up we would lose the texture back here if we tried to make these white you can see the white cards reflecting back in it but as it stands it looks very much like cinema if you follow movies if you watch movies uh, often in movies they will not expose for the subject they'll expose for the background and the subject will simply maybe an outline or just a little bit of edge lighting or something uh, and for me this is very cinematic i love the little touch of color uh, and i think this would make a just a hellaciously awesome ad for a, a, a tea company. I just, I, all of them are just, all the shots from the from the students are amazing, but uh, this one is a little bit different and I really, really like it. How was it done? Right there on the kitchen table. Now you can see if, if uh, this is just the behind the scenes shot and you can see how much lighter it is here. It has on the, on the, the tethered panel here, it has a totally different feel to it than the original photograph that I just showed you. Totally different. And Michelle was trying to decide which one she liked, you know, how to, how to place that exposure. And she ended up with this one because it just felt right. And sometimes photography is about feeling. Don't you love this black edge coming down here? And we pick up the white edge as it goes into the, the black uh chair back white edge comes down and the white edge comes over here and delineates it from the background I just love i just love stuff like that it really gets me going you notice on this side we've got a nice little highlight here everything looks good here once again a couple of white cards and and a big, big beautiful window just a fun place to shoot mordecai klein mordecai did a uh, really sort of a very modern take I, I called it brave composition. It is brave. It's unique. Um, a rule of thirds be damned, right? There's no rule of thirds going on here. What he's done is create something that's just really interesting to look at. Uh, and if I was a magazine editor, I could put this on the left side, start my article over here, finish my article on that side. Or if I was doing an ad, I could choose one of these colors, throw it on that side, uh, or even pull the gradient out maybe uh, on that side put my text up there and have a really dynamic really powerful image and don't you just love the blues 
the cool blues against all these warm colors. Isn't that beautiful? Just really, really works for me. It's bubbles from the boiling um, uh, water in there getting ready to put the tea in. How did he do it? Well, he's got a fairly complex little thing here. We've got, oh, we've got a, uh, a strip light behind a scrim. That is the main light here that you see. Then we've got a, a light here that's really aiming at this board. And that's this highlight that you see back here. And then we've got the uh, yellow and red gels blasting down over here. Uh, these lights are not in use. Uh, just this one, this one, and uh, yeah, these two here are in use. That one and this one over here to, to light up this whiteboard. And we end up with this really beautiful, exciting, interesting killer shot. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. Great color. Lots of fun to look at. Our last image is, I think it's our last, yes, our last image is Rose Smith. And we've got the beautiful um, cup down here. I love the way the lattice work reflects back in the cup. It really ties everything together. Notice how the lighting, it, it gradients across this edge. It gradients here. It gradients there. Something Rose's, Rose does a lot is gradient her light and create interest in the light so it's not the the light source itself isn't flat it's it's graded and interesting and she added a few bubbles to the top of the tea whenever i shoot tea or coffee or anything like that i try to get a, a, a some ripples on the top or maybe a bubble or two or something something to break it up so it's not just a flat surface if it's a flat surface it looks like jello to me it doesn't look like liquid it looks like jello right it's not moving. Let's get some motion in it. So remember to stir it just before you take a shot, or, or, uh, you know, take your take your knuckles and wrap the top of the table and get the little concentric circles in it. Uh, anything to break up that surface really works well. How did Rose do it? You're gonna love this. We've got an old Norman um, grid here with a clamp light. This is a, a tungsten clamp light up against the Norman which is just creating this sort of um, specular highlights in the, in the T. This is a uh, soft box, and this is all continuous light with a scarf hung in front of it so that the scarf will break up a little bit uh, the tones of that, that um, lattice work so it doesn't look just pure white, doesn't look real studio. Over here, we've got a whiteboard with the light shining up on it, and the entire intention of this whiteboard is to give that highlight right there so that this copper thing up here isn't dead, just sort of lost uh, in the darkness over here because it's copper and it's you know got a little bit of a shine to it, so it's going to give us a specular. Look at that. We see the board. Give us a little bit of the specular from that, that board, but it also just helps the entire dynamics of the shot feel feel real. A little bit coming back on this, this board as well, but I think most of this board is coming from the, the uh, Norman uh, grid spot with that clamp light. These are like shop lights. You can see what kind of light it is. This is those like $7.99 Home Depot shop lights with a tungsten light in it. Um, so there's not a whole lot of money being spent to do this shot. Very, very beautiful photograph. So let's look at our, our shots again from uh, uh, bottom to top. We've got Rose uh, with her. We've got uh, Mordecai's very colorful, bright, dynamic uh, shot. Michelle's lovely cinematic approach. Gary's very modern, sleek uh, reflection approach. Bob Wheaton's very down home. Nice cup of the cup of tea. Real pretty paneling, etc. And Barb Sherman up here uh, with her uh, lovely old wood and propped out 
and very clever uh, still life. And Amy Avant up top, Armor Avant up top with uh, with her great lighting going around here. Super controlled with depth of field and the way she's uh, lit the separate products. So, uh, so there's, there's seven shots to look at. Really great shots. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something a little bit about uh, how the photographers uh, lit these things. Uh, by the way, if you like the content here on my channel... Uh, I would say please, please, please hit the uh, subscription button. And if you want to know when something hits the uh, hits the channel, hit the little bell thing. Uh, where that subscription thing is, it's up here. It's over here. It's down. I don't know where it is here. I'm always forgetting where the damn thing is. Uh, if you want to check out more about uh, Project 52 uh, or my own website where I, I work with photographers one-on-one, -on -one, see the notes below. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.